Ariana Grande paid homage to Mean Girls. It's playing Mean Girls. Uh, mean Girls is, is, is like a staple. The original source material for the movie is this book called Queen Bees and Wannabes by a woman named Rosalind Wiseman, um, answering parents' questions of how to navigate their daughters through this tricky time. Go be sexy and it's empowering. And it sometimes is and sometimes is deeply not. Oh, if we can recognize this behavior and kind of find jokes about it. Do not have sex because you will get pregnant and die. It'll help us name it, you know, um, see the ridiculousness in it. You smell like a baby prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's a lot, of, a lot to dissect from the film when it comes to costuming and when it comes to... Um, the general tropes that are used because it is a very stereotypical teen movie. Every yeah. era needs a good. I don't know what this era's Mean Girls is, but I had I wanted to know what you thought of the costumes. Um, being that, obviously, I don't want to sound like a like a like a <gasps> old woman here, but they are quite sexualized for what is trying to be. 16 year olds 15 year olds or something i just know that if my sister would if she tried to dress like regina george or even even Car even katie in some of the scenes <gasps> my mum would kill her and that would just absolutely be no way in hell she'd be leaving the house although it is aimed at teenagers and it is almost like a farce miss smith this is no time to be laughing over the top exaggerated version of <laughs> events because I know there is still a lot of people who are like, I'm not going to let my child watch Mean Girls because it's very over-sexualized for teenagers. Because they are obviously like what women in, who were like in their early 20s portraying 15-year-olds. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Fort, and I was the costume designer on the original 2004 movie Mean Girls. At the time, it was like Paris Hilton and that genre of young women that were, you know, sophisticated and um, spent a lot of money on clothes and thought a lot about what they would wear. Everyone wanted to wear, you know, those um, graphic tees with, with some sassy slogan, short skirts, you know, and it was just, it was just the perfect mood, you know, the zeitgeist of the mm -hmm. time. I know that Regina was played by Rachel McAdams, who I think was 26 when that movie was filmed. So she was a fully grown woman. She has on her high boots. She's got her collar turned up, her dark sweater that makes her look like she's the boss and they both just balance her out. Especially the Halloween party where she's literally just wearing something out of Ann Summer's lingerie <laughs> and some animal ears. This is literally made out of a heavy duty stretch plastic. I really wanted to use plastic. Well, that's what I think but the problem is with, with the movie is, I, I mean, I, I don't think they, they had like a huge intention. I think it is just like a fun movie, but I feel like the movie was almost taking the piss out of itself. Look at what they're wearing. It's like ridiculous. You know what I mean? But then I also think yeah. that I can kind of understand where people come from when they say that the main audience of the movie is very are very impressionable. Like when you're that young, you do kind of morph into the characters that you see. If I watched Mean Girls like before I went to school, I would have went to school like one of them, whoever I identified with that day. I mean, maybe not Karen because I feel like it takes... She's a whole different character. Doing a female character who's pretty and dumb now is a lot different than handling that in 2004. Oh, totally. And yeah, like Hollywood, Hollywood plays into that. It was so great to have Karen have this kind of dual, um, you know, maybe not smart, but also very wise because she's sort of very uncritical. Katie comes into the movie in quite tomboyish uh, clothing. She wears khaki trousers, a button-up shirt, and her hair in a ponytail, and slowly realizes what's cool and what's not. You know, she's a simply dressed teenager, and then she lands in this place that's very foreign to her, and so she gradually changes. She wanted a necklace, it's a leather strap that she pulled off of one of her bracelets. She took something from her past life and adapted it. And you can see that get stripped back and reshaped into this, what they call the plastics, all pink and, you know, beautiful blown out hair and lip gloss, smoky eyes, all of Basically that. Basically nothing school. like a 15 year old would look ever. Nothing just like that. Ever. Literally ever. Yeah. Like, just would never look that hot as a 15 year old. My hair never went that way. My makeup was all from like I was the front say. of magazines. <laughs>
you can't do you makeup. That is that is your trial and error period of yeah. you know, you, you look at that and then you think, right, okay, they're wearing black around the eyes and then you do it and you just look like a raccoon. <laughs> like <laughs> look yeah. like you've just slept in the makeup. <laughs> I used to straighten my hair like all the time, but I never blow dried it first. So it would just be like, I mean, technically straighter, but just really puffy and frizzy. And I Curly used to, the root. yeah. Yeah. And I used to look at characters like Regina and I was like, well, how is her hair straight? And nobody ever told me like different hair types require different things. Therefore, you can't just buy some straighteners and do that and your hair will be exactly the same as someone else's. It, we don't want to tell us that kind of stuff. Now, kids have got how to draw your eyebrows on tutorials. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. It's, I mean, it's over-sexualized in certain scenes, but it's over-glamorized. And I think that we, I remember as a kid, I didn't ever stop to think, which sounds stupid, but like, I don't really think any of us did. The reason she does something in like PE or whatever, and then two seconds later, she looks perfect, is because there's like hours in between those scenes where she's had retouching of our makeup and hair and everything i used to think well why can't i come straight off the field and just look like that i'm like because nobody does so that was a wig not even rachel mcadams like it's totally fake and i never stopped to think hang on this is a movie because i just was obsessed with like wanting to be just like the characters i saw not the ones in mean girls all the time but you know these days i don't think Movies are as popular, which sounds strange, but I just mean, like, my sister's never really got excited about the release of a movie. She's always just sitting there streaming YouTube. The, their version of perfect characters would be, like, influencers and anyone you see on Instagram because they don't stop and think, oh, you know what I mean? Like, when I take a picture yeah, of yeah. on Instagram, I don't have a team of people behind me, but the influencers yeah. do because they make that much money. I don't know. They're, like, it's very imperative that we have to be in Dubai to sell these jeans and they have to, like, have this amazing background and their hair's all windswept. And I'm like, yeah, but they probably got, like, a fan behind them. Like, it doesn't just happen. I don't think that I would have survived in this Instagram era because, like, no, it's I would have survived, but I wouldn't have been very happy as a kid. I feel like we were the last generation of kids that grew up with certain huge movie releases that were aimed at teenagers if regina had so, an email it would definitely mm -hmm. be like i don't know 2004 having an email would probably be like rich bitch at hotmail.com <laughs> no <laughs> but yeah right so from a performative <laughs> point of view what yes. do you like about mean girls or what stands out what what stands the test of time Okay, what stands the test of time? Oh, that's a very good way of putting it. I feel like if this movie was made today, it would be a whole thing. Everyone would be like, oh my God, this movie's so dated in the way it talks to women and blah, blah, blah. And back in 2004, it was just like... I'm sorry I called you a gap-toothed bitch. It's not your fault you're so gap-toothed. This is a funny movie. Come and see it. I feel like everybody's a lot more... Triggered. Yeah. You all have got to stop calling each other sluts and whores. It just makes it okay for guys to call you sluts and whores. Was there, was there any, did you want to handle that character a little bit differently for the show? Yeah, I think between 2004 and now, there, I definitely wanted to let people know that Karen is sex positive and that's okay. But like, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing in some ways because it has changed a lot of people's views towards women for the better. But then I also think that it like it's kind of sad in some other ways because I'm like, now everyone's too scared to make a joke. I feel like every movie that we see from now on is going to be like really politically correct. It's really good escapism. It's really good at like laugh out loud. That is so fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. It, and it's good even when you're older because you can be like, oh God, this is what I used to be like. Two years ago, she tells me that hoop earrings are her thing. And then I'm not allowed to wear it. <laughs> and i don't know i feel like it's gonna go down in history as one of the best movies ever for our generation we will never let it die no. that's true mm -hmm. i feel like main girls wasn't so much about boy meets girl she just you know came up to me and started talking to me about crap <laughs> she's so pathetic yeah. it's more about women meeting women and women not getting along and then obviously all of that comes good in the end and Katie has something to teach the high school about being themselves. 
everything stereotypical about a woman is in this movie. It takes the mick out of itself, so it is a, it's self-aware of, of how over-the-top it is. But at the same time, it does kind of glamorise things it shouldn't be doing, especially for its impressionable audience. But then I'm like, well, how can you not when you're trying to make it? So I just go back and forth all the time, to be honest. It, it's not just camp. It's not just people being like feisty to each other these people these characters are we try to present them as real people and and show that like even the person who's in the wrong is a person and deserves the opportunity to move beyond it right you don't know how to to relax and trust other women until you until you do and for some people it goes their whole life I didn't feel preached to by some great message I felt like it got it got it you know what I mean? The movie mm -hmm. understood what it was like to be a teenage girl surrounded by other teenage girls. Because school is mad when you think about it. You have everyone in the same age group put in one place. Everyone's held to the standard of what one person or one group of people decides is cool. And I felt like Mean Girls really understood that and portrayed it perfectly. One time she punched me in the face. It was awesome. Katie is quite irrelevant in the story. I know we watch the the whole movie through her and we, it starts with her and it's like we see you know when when she sees the teenagers fighting at the fountain and it reminds her of like the jungle yeah the camera is katie basically but the whole story is janice's revenge plot against regina mm -hmm. and i really like how you start the movie thinking that janice and damien are perfect like lovely friends really nice but really, by the end of the movie, you realise that her and Regina, Janice and Regina, are both horrible. And even Janice admits that. See, at least me and Regina George know we're mean. You try to act like you're so innocent. Was there a particular situation or incident in your much younger days that inspired you to write Mean Girls? There was a girl when I was a freshman who said to me, you're, you're really pretty. pretty. And I was like, thank yeah. you. She's like, so you agree? <gasps> you think you're really pretty? And I was like, it's a trap! What? <laughs> Teenage girls and kids in general all are awful or have the potential to be awful to each other. It's it's hard to make the distinction sometimes, which is why I feel like sometimes teachers, they don't know whether to get involved or not because it is hard to make the distinction between bullying, like actual bullying that definitely shouldn't happen, and like teasing because, I'm sorry, if you go to school for five years, you are going to get teased by someone at some point. You are, you are going to have a bad day at school. She just kind of morphs into what she thinks will help her fit in because you can just tell, like, that's all she wants. She wouldn't have minded if the rock kids, you know, the punk kids, if they were the popular ones, I think she would have just, like, got them all and just went with it. It just happened to be yeah. that Regina was the popular one. She would have just swooped her up. <laughs> like, it's just, like... You're right. Very... She's totally impressionable. You can't wear a tank top two days in a row and you can only wear your hair in a ponytail once a week. So I guess you pick today. Because it is Janice's revenge tale. And if, if Janice didn't despise Regina and she actually hated one of the band geeks, the whole movie would be about Katie infiltrating that group of people. I just think she wanted to be liked and she wanted to be accepted. And the way she kept uh, comparing it to the jungle, I think she was just trying to like take cover. Because obviously she didn't, I don't think she wanted any of the limelight on her. She just wanted to be in a group and be accepted. Kind of like Gretchen at the end where she just joins another group. Yeah. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, she, I don't think she wanted to ever be a leader. She just wanted to just fit in and just like, disappear a little bit. But I, ca I have to say, the scene where they all go to Regina's house and then they're all in the mirror and they're picking fault with themselves. Karen says something about how our nail beds suck. I don't even look <laughs> at mine mean? enough no, to I even know. know. So, and then Katie's like, I have really bad breath in the morning. <laughs> and she's like, what? That is really stupid that like, you're just trying to find something to pick with yourself on one hand mm -hmm. it's good because it show it highlights just how ridiculous they're being welcome back nerd thanks i had a look i've ended i've just realized what the website is actually from teen vogue so this is going to be clearly riddled with nonsense but like <laughs> the it's just an article that basically said um what would happen if Mean Girls was set in 2000 and well it says 2018 because that was modern then but Obviously, this still applies now. And it's yeah. just funny because it says things like the burn book would have been a burn blog, which is so true. No true. way anyone would write in a book. <laughs> that just wouldn't happen. Um, 
the burn boot would have been a burn blog and there would be screenshots instead of Regina actually throwing the pages around the school. She would just screenshot it and send it on like, a group text on the school. That is and I was so like, true. And it wouldn't have been yeah. as dramatic. <laughs> it wouldn't have. It would have Nothing been like, Nothing is satisfying please. anymore. Done. Like, <laughs> pressing a button is not the same as throwing the whole thing in the air. Um, Regina would destroy anyone who commented on Aaron's Instagram pictures. <laughs> <laughs> which i want to kind of see <laughs> i want someone to make these like instagram accounts in character and just do it back when snapchat had its best friends feature available she'd be all over that yeah when snapchat was first made you could see each other's best friends if your boyfriend's best friend was another girl it was so easy to catch them out oh. i don't know why they got rid of it gretchen would get upset when she saw karen tagged in pictures with regina without her she yeah. had that energy she yeah. had that left out friend energy I know, it was sad, really. Um, Janice would totally have Tumblr, and she'd reblog the angstiest quotes imaginable. <laughs> I had Tumblr. As would Damien. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. I had Tumblr. <laughs> the Rainbow Girl would likely have some sort of live journal or pixel site, and she'd obviously use the rainbow icon to describe herself. <laughs> Who's the Rainbow Girl? The I wish we could bake a cake with oh God, yeah. rainbows and smiles and everyone would be happy. Go My Pixel site, I can still remember it now. It was it was silver sequins and then I had like a banner going along the top that just had the names of everybody that was my best friends but all spelt wrong. It was like Hannah and then instead of the letter R, it would be like A A R R. <laughs> it was like <laughs> Rachel B that. B double E. And then those weird yeah. brackets. We used to do like bracket dot dot dot. Hannah Kiss. Oh, dot, dot, dot. Dot, yeah. Dot, dot. <laughs> so yeah, and you, you go on character map. Hmm? You go on, you go on character map and get all those symbols that looked like the letters. It was like really uncool to just spell your name like with letters. That was just but the worst thing you could do. That's kind of true for the burn book though, because when you look at the cover of the burn book, all of the it's like newspaper or magazine cutouts and all mm-hmm. the letters are different, different fonts. And it's, it is like a hangover from that whole movie and that whole time. Yeah. And then the last thing on this list that I would like to just state, because it's just funny, is that Kevin, <gasps> you know, Kevin at poor, he would be a SoundCloud rapper. And <laughs> yo, yo, yo. <laughs> oh, you suck at MC and God. No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, every you know oh what? I really want to just say that in a room full of people my age and see how many people, the people who don't rap back, would be like scary to me because I just fully expect everyone to know that rap. Oh, Kevin G. Thank you, Kevin. That's enough. Happy holidays, everybody. That was the funniest bonds from that list. I just want to share them with you. Candy cane guns. Okay, hurry up. Glen Coco, fall for you, Glen Coco. You go, Glen Coco. Uh, Oh, Katie, here you go. One for you. Um, and none for Gretchen Wieners. Bye. 